Hello everybody, welcome back to another Reset Info channel. In today's video, I'll show you the first things to do after setup on your Samsung Galaxy X Cover 7 Pro. So first, what you guys want to do is go over and let me just click on the home. Here, as you guys can see, we are now officially after the setup. So what we want to do now is first connect to the Wi-Fi. So let's quickly go here. Now let's go over to settings and here we need to connect to Wi-Fi. So go to connections. Now in the Wi-Fi section, click on it. And here we will have an option to add a network. So as you guys can see, I'm going to connect to this one. So I'll be back once I enter the password. So now let's just click connect after entering the password. And now we are connected to the Wi-Fi. So what we can do next is check for software updates. It's very important to run the latest version of your software. So what we need to do is we need to scroll down. And now here you will have something called software update. So click it here, click on download and install. And it will check for updates automatically. So all we gotta do now is just wait. As you guys can see, I'm running the latest version of the One UI. So I'm on One UI 7.0 and on the Android version of 15. So this is how you guys can check that. It's very important to do that in the beginning. Now let's move on and add a Google account. So I recommend using the Play Store for it. So you automatically set up the Play Store and update the apps. So go to Google Play, click on sign in. And here you will need to enter your Gmail or email and then a password. So now let's just enter our... Let's enter our email. Now click next and now I'll quickly enter the password and I'll get back to you guys. So now we have an option to select who will be using the device. So if the device is for you then select I will be using this device. If not then select let's say your children. And if it's for them then steps may vary here. So this step might be a bit different than this one because I need to choose, I will be using this device. But you guys can easily check that out. It'll be probably the same, maybe two or three more steps just to increase the security of the phone and overall account for your children. So now let's click next. Here, let's click on I agree. And as you guys can see, all we gotta do is just wait now. So now let's click accept and make sure that backup device data is enabled. As you guys can see now we are ready to update our apps. And here you can verify your purchases instantly. You can use either biometrics or password, but we haven't set up the biometrics yet. So let's go with the password. So I'll get back to you guys once I enter the password for the email. Now the Google Play Store is loading and what we can do is click on our avatar here and go to my apps and games and here click on see details in the updates available in the overview section. So now as you guys can see we have 19 apps to update so while we're just setting up our phone we can click on update all and now they can update in the background and we can move on to configuring our biometrics and the screen lock. So go over to the settings. Now let's scroll a bit up and here go to the security and privacy. Oops, not this one, it's the lock screen. I misread that. 
so now as you guys can see we have the screen lock and biometrics here now what we can do is select either pattern password or a pin i recommend using the pin i think it's the highest security of them all not including the password but here you guys need to use your keyboard so i don't think this method is that great only if you really need like high-end security but i think pin is enough you guys can basically make a strong password so now let's click continue i use the most basic pin so don't set up a pin like me create your own that you'll remember and now here you guys can hide content from notifications if you want the privacy so nobody reads your notifications then click done and as you guys can see now we have the screen lock so we can enter our password and let's move on to setting up our biometrics so go to face recognition here we need to click continue and now let's click register now we need to position our face in the frame right here so in this camera and after it scans it we will basically have the face id unlocked so let me do it off camera now our face is registered and we can use it to unlock our phone or stand lock triangle swipe here you guys can unlock it with the face recognition when you unlock it then here let's move on from the face recognition go to fingerprints and here click on continue so we need to place our finger on the sensor right here so we got a sensor now what we need to do is tap it a bit as you guys can see so make sure we cover our entire finger just like that and now the worst part the edges so now we need to use the edges of our finger and now the fingerprint just been added so now let's click done let's test our fingerprint out and it might be a problem for me never mind it went through so that's great that's how we know that we set up our phone to be the most secure now what we can do is we can scroll up and sign in to the samsung account so go into here go with sign in google with google email our phone number and as you guys can see it already signed me in because we've used our account for the play store but if you didn't then basically you will have to confirm that it's you trying to log into the samsung account and now you guys see this screen so let me just click on agree and now we have a two-step verification so all we gotta do is enter the code that they sent to the phone number so i'll see you guys once i enter the code so now it took me some time to get into the account but we're finally in after you enter the verification code you will be prompted to the this site so basically we will have our account right here right up top and what we can do next after signing our account here we can basically make sure that the samsung cloud is updated so let's click on update and let's see if now we can use it it's updating so I'll see you guys once it updates. And now after installing and updating our Samsung Cloud, let's head over to the Samsung account settings. Go to Samsung Cloud. And here make sure that you guys sync the most important things to you. And also here you guys can back up and restore your data. 
so after we've done it what we can do is change and customize our wallpaper so hold your finger on the screen and go to wallpapers and style and here click change wallpapers now you guys can choose a lot of wallpapers from here i find this one being very aesthetic i think it looks great so let's click next and here we have the lock screen first so we can click on it we can change the style and change it from thin to thick i'm not exactly sure how that works to be honest but here we can basically change a lot of it now we can change the colors and also the style so it can look like this it can look like this and here we can also show the weather information and the date above the clock or under the clock so now let's basically click done and now everything looks like this I think it looks much better than the default one but it's just my opinion let me know in the comments if you guys like it and what you guys can also do is customize the widgets and themes so here we have the themes basically we need to update this app too so let's click update now let's wait a couple of seconds it should be pretty quick and after we install the galaxy themes here we will have a lot of themes to choose from so let's click themes now it should work and here some of them are paid so don't worry about it so here we have some ducks it's also paid here we have strawberries and this is how we can basically change them but remember that it's paid and you don't need anything for money so basically let's stick to our wallpaper and style we can change the color palette here so as you guys can see we can change it to let's say something the pink now the settings are applied and it will look like this when we go over to the settings so now it looks like this it looks pretty normal as you guys can see i think it looks pretty great and after that what you guys can do is go to play store and make sure that the google pay is installed so it's google pay now it should be a google wallet so it's right here and if it's not installed by default for you, then go over and quickly install this app. So you guys can basically set up a card on your device to make the payments faster using the NFC. So click open. Now here we need to choose an account. So I'll choose this one. And here let's click view wallet and this is how our wallet looks like so now as you guys can see we can be a part of a lot of program clubs like our loyalty cards and here we can add to wallet we can add a payment card and here i've got the card but i won't be able to add it because i do not have it physically with me and you need to actually have your card right next to you while you set it up but basically after you set it up you will be able to pay when you enable the nfc function it's this little icon here and when we go over to the settings if it's not here then it's probably hidden so let's click on edit and check if it's anywhere here we have the nfc now we can drag it here and this is basically how NFC works. So you guys can make contactless payments. And after you set up your card, you can also set up your transport pass, loyalty card or gift card. And you can also search for your loyalty clubs right here. If you forget about something, then you guys can just scroll and let's say I forgot about the let's say the apart or BP, so I can add it there and 
After that, what you guys can do is uninstall any unwanted apps. Samsung is not that loaded as most of the softwares in my opinion. So basically, if you want to uninstall some apps, go to settings, go to apps. And here we will have your apps. Now here, Samsung is not that bloated and there's not many apps that we can actually delete from here. So it's very hard to find something. As you guys can see, we cannot like it, uninstall the avatar stickers because it's from the system. Everything here is from the system. So you know that it doesn't come bloated that much. And here, as you guys can see, if you do not need, let's say, any app, I've got no idea which app can be uninstalled because all I see is apps from the system. But if you got an app that you want to delete, simply click on it, click on install, and that's basically it. So now go over to the settings, go back and now go to the device care, go to battery, and here, as you guys can see, we can change the battery protection. So don't do it with the basic one. You need to change the basic to adaptive. So let's click OK. And it will basically charge at, stop charging at the 80%. And when you're asleep and you're not using your phone, then it will charge to 100% to increase and reduce like its lifespan. So to keep your battery full and what you guys can also do is change the not the battery information but you guys can change the auto dim screen here you guys can change the background user limits or power saving I think power saving is the most important thing here so basically we can enable the power saving we can limit CPU speed to 70% we can decrease the brightness and set the motion smoothness to standard so if you want 100 20 hertz when your power is saving or and you just want to limit your cpu let's say then basically you guys can do it right here but i don't think that works no it doesn't so if you really want to do something here then as you guys can see now it just feels very laggy and when i just do that and do that it will be much more smooth and it will be smoother so now after we set up our battery we also have the charging settings here we can enable fast charging if you don't want your device to heat up then disable it but if you don't mind your device heating up a bit to charge faster then go on and enable it right here so that's basically it for the video, I hope it was helpful and if it was then leave a like, sub and a comment and I'll see you in the next one.